Hi, everybody. Wow. Um, Good morning. We get deep today about the storm damage that is inflicting our oh, beautiful Nathan's city. Suffering. And then we talk about the real victim, which mm. was not on the news for mm. some reason. It's weird. That victim is me. Good You'll point. see. I mean, pray for Nathan. That's all we can say. We pray are starting a GoFundMe. Um, Ryan McNaught, the brick man from Lego Masters, he joined us. Yeah, he's so lovely. Griffin Lowe from the Freo Dockers has a chat to us. Um, if you've been cheated on, um, did you ask for compensation and what was that? These are super <laughs> interesting because it happens, by the way. Yeah, it does. Plus, people that have unwieldy job titles, we try to get to the bottom of some of those. And th- earlier on in the morning, actually, we talked about the one uh, that had you, if you were the one that had to break the bag. Bad news. This is Nathan, Matt and Sean. Always excited when this guy walks in the door. It's the brick man, Ryan McNaught, in town for because Lego has met Jurassic Park. It's a thing. It's a Isn't thing. It? Oh, uh, you, merge, you merge two superpowers together, Lego bricks and dinosaurs, just to explode children's minds. Yeah. Now, when we watch, say, Lego Masters, right, so... People like they write a, like a they draw a little crude drawing and then mm. they somehow work out what it's going to be in three D and stuff. So with you doing dinosaurs, do you get three D modelling? Oh, what, what's the deal? How does it how does it become three D? Yeah, it's a bit of a thing. We do sketches and drawings and that kind of stuff and yes. stuff. But like the T Rex, for example, like a life size T Rex, yes. it weighs one point six tons. Far oh, okay, out. right. So oh. when you're talking about things of this size and scale, it's it's you do have to do real engineering drawings. Like I'm yes. a Lego engineer, but we yes. have to get real engineers. Like really, yeah, proper engineers. So they don't like them. fall on the children and Cor- stuff. That yep. bad for bad for publicity. <laughs> yeah. and so yeah. How do you how do you travel them around? How much do you, can you take? They come them apart, Sean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Or do you glue them? <laughs> do you glue them? Well, I think it's a fair That's question, a mate. Really I know, I think it's a fair you. question. No, so <laughs> we, we kind of put them in sections, yeah. right? So um, the Brachiosaurus, for example's sake, like it's uh, enormous, right? It's mm. the size of like a double-decker bus. Yeah. So you you got to think about, well, how do you move that around? Oh, yeah. great how, question, Sean. How, how you, you put it on a double-decker uh, bus, yeah. surely. Well, well, how does it fit through a door? Like yes. the doors of the convention centre. So we basically put it all into sections and, and do what we say. So they're kind of pre-built sections that travel. Around, I, I know, and are those sections so you they break out and say so so something breaks up in four bits, right? Mm-hmm. But those other bits, they are they they they're glued together. Aren't some they? some of them are the ones where you say. can go up and hug and get a photo yes. with and all yep, that kind yep, of stuff, yes. and then other ones which are safe from the public that. You know, can't cause an accident. They're not. It's just regular Lego stuck together. The why Lego you, way. Why, why uh-huh. wouldn't you glue them just in case? Well, we don't need to. Then it's, you can break them down and use the six million pieces it, well, for something think, else. If you think of like how we build it, for example, so you literally mm-hmm. take a brick, put some glue on it, stick it down. Yeah. Next one, get a brick. So that process takes a uh, long time. Yeah. Okay. Right? So you don't really want to do it unless you have to. Like the whole exhibition yeah. is thirteen thousand hours. Oh. oh. So, Did you have the yeah. clock running the whole time? <laughs> Well, I don't. I don't know what you guys did for COVID, but uh, being a Melbourneian, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. we were locked yes. down forever in a day. So that was our COVID project. Yeah, was right. that just like a yeah. sweatshop of children? <laughs> <laughs> we prefer. I want to go home to mummy. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we Shut feed up the build a dinosaur. and stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, this is going to be incredible because mm. um, I, I was just talk, talking to you before. I remember the first time that you came in, you mate brought us some little Lego things to mm. put together, and and this you were just before Lego Masters. It was before too. Lego yeah. Masters, yeah. and then Lego Masters happened. I've told you that you're a bona fide. I list celebrity here yes. in Australia F-grade. right now. F-grade, no, F-grade, mate, yeah. you did the reddies, you did no. the red carpets and yeah, stuff. I've that's seen right. you. What's he wearing? People say. <laughs> uh, it's amazing how Lego has exploded, isn't it? Because now they're like showcased in shopping centres and stuff. These be like um, the idea of a Lego store was like, well, why would that happen? But, yeah. but now they're everywhere. Yeah, look, I mean, Lego's always been popular, but yes. it's about making it mainstream. I guess yes. that's kind of the thing. And you know, I, I won't say people my vintage, but us older people, we loved Lego when we were a kid, and all of a sudden now it's. It's like, oh, I remember how much fun that was to play with. You know, I used to love doing that. And now Lego have kind of made sets specifically for adults. Yes. Both in terms of difficulty and subject matter. Yeah. Like, I made Optimus Prime. As oh, a Lego yes. Set it's like, how awesome is that? Yeah, that is brilliant. So, so wait, what, And so what's for growing ups then? No. Well, things, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. But even like flowers, like Lego makes, yes. you know, bunches of flowers Yeah, and stuff. beautiful like, bouquets cool. and yeah. stuff. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Hey, Brick Man, Nathan brings up a really good point, right? So you come from Bendigo, right? And yep. you're just growing up, you, you get the black belt in um, Lego <laughs> and now you're on red carpets and you go on all these functions. People come up and ask autographs. 
Is that still... How weird is that for you? Oh, look, it doesn't happen very often, to be honest. Come on. No, oh. no, no. Hear me out, hear yeah. me out. In context, so mm-hmm. if I'm at a Lego store, yes. absolutely, people say, hey, Brickman, how you doing? Whatever. But just walking down the street, that's Hamish's job. Yeah. So, right. so I'm I, ha- very happy to fly under the radar, if you don't mind. Mm. I want to know about your house, right? So I know that you've got your own Lego building area, yes. right? Yes. And I know that I've seen the Lego Masters contestants, when they've built something really amazing, then they would probably showcase that on a mantle in their land room and stuff. Does your Lego, something you're really proud that you've made, is that allowed to live in your actual house or is everything Lego have to be kept in your garage? Because this is a love of yours. Yeah, well, so so there's two things. This is going to sound a bit strange, but first off, Lego is a job, so yes. work is work. So yeah, when, yeah. I, when I do Lego, that's that happens in the workshop. Yeah. So that's so the only stuff at home is, is something meaningful. So for example, it's like um, we travel a lot, so I can't really have a pet. So I made a Lego dog, and so that's our, <laughs> that's, our, that's our Lego pet, right? That's saddest the saddest thing I've ever seen. Well, it's, 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 it's super cute, by the way. It doesn't yeah. eat much and really yeah. easy to clean up. But, no, that's um, true. So where's the Lego dog? Well, it's at home. It's, it's in the Lego dog house. It's, <laughs> it's in the li- in the living room. Oh, yeah, it's super cute. But yeah, absolutely. Oh, Ryan. Um, but, but, <laughs> <laughs> but when we when we moved into our house, um, we had a wall in yeah. the living room, and we're like, okay, what are we going to put on that wall? You know, it's a big debate around the family. You mm. know, uh, you know, the wife she wants something, yep. I want different different things. So what are we going to do? I said, okay, hear me out. Trust me, I'm going to make something for that wall. It's going to be the only piece of Lego in okay. the house. Yeah. And she goes, well, I need to know what it is. I said, I, I'm actually not going to tell you. I'm going to do like an unveiling. Going to get the little curtain. Yes. Yes. The whole yes. thingo, and very nervous moments. And fortunately, she liked it. What so is what it? Was it? It's just, it's just like um, a mo- I call it a mosaic, but it's just of some splashes of color and stuff. Pro it's up. a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit out there, but yeah. sort of abstract Lego. And, and have you made a frame to go around? Is it it, like no, the it's whole, just the Lego on no, the wall. Just Lego yeah, on the minimalist. wall. Wow. Got a, got, Lego being Scandinavian, we've got a bit of a Scandinavian sure. house, so it's yeah. a bit minimalist our place. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, you should sell Lego art. Yeah, it's a yeah. thing. It's not a bad oh. thing. Ryan, with um, being a Lego master, do you have to keep your level certification oh. up? So you're on. You've got the best questions today. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Today, I ask you what you're like anyway. uh, absolutely. So um, pre-COVID, obviously, but um, every year we have to go to Denmark. We call it being summoned to the mothership. Yes, all right. Yes. So the mothership beams us up, and we have a meeting where we all get together. Yeah. Um, all of us Lego certified professionals around the world. Everyone walks in, takes their Lego helmets off. Yeah, <laughs> totally, yeah, it's a, it's a whole thing. I'm right? a Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah, and um, and you you know it's they'll give us a challenge and they'll put us through our paces and it's not so much as to what we build but mm-hmm. more the process we go through and how yeah. we can explain it how we can inspire kids with it all of those kind of things and so it's pretty nerve-wracking it's not the be all and end all it's not like uh, you have to pass this or it's you you're know, out you're out yeah. but it's it's pretty full on how many yeah, masters right. are there again how many masters 14 uh, there's 21 of us 21, 21, 21 of yeah. us there was 22 yep. but uh, unfortunately what happened to one? Oh, we, we had a retirement oh okay we had a retirement. Right. <laughs> thank god and, and, they are, <laughs> <laughs> and how many of them are you, uh, is, have you got some like best Lego friends in there? I've got a mix? couple that really ins- I'm inspired by. Yes. Um, Sean Kenny, a guy in New York, he does a lot of animals and does things that like put some zoos and things like that. Just amazing work. So I'm a big fan of his. And another guy in Belgium of all places, Dirk, he's the most incredible person at making realistic people. So he can okay. actually make a Lego model that amazing. Look, looks exactly like you. And, and are there any Lego yeah. women? Yeah, there are. So um, Beth Lego and she- ladies. <laughs> Lego ladies. We've got, we've got quite a few. So we all, we're all kind of good at different things. So we yes. all do different stuff. So Beth in Chicago, she uses it to teach maths. Right? Oh, amazing! Yeah, uses yep. Lego as like fractals and things mm. like that. Way, way in China, for example, say like, um, she does like outdoor sculptures. So wow. yeah. Well, so how many of the other Lego masters have scored a TV gig? A couple. Uh, so they're uh, and, and the same franchise of the yeah, show? Yeah, so um, the way that Lego Masters worked was it was originally in the UK yes. and it was a very different looking show. Okay. And so we took it here in Australia and then we yep. put it on steroids and did what we did what we did with yep. it. And now it's been, it's in like 20 countries now. Yeah, right. Oh, so, yeah, it's oh, amazing. Yeah. And uh, it was really funny because we're kind of almost the OG, but we're shown in multiple countries and, and of course they did the voiceover of us, right? Yes. Oh, so, oh, so, yes. Yeah, yes. so I've been dubbed. So in 
in Italy, I sound like Hagrid from Harry Potter. Oh, Kane. hilarious. <laughs> what does Hamish sound, sound like? like? <laughs> <laughs> very, very funny. Very That's funny. hilarious. Yeah. You've got yeah. a Dolmio grin. It's yeah, brilliant. It um, so how many life. times have you walked on Lego? Or can you do it now without feeling the pain? Oh, no, I've got, a fair, I've got a fair few scars. Yeah. But if I can share one scar. Yes. yes. I have the many I have. So our big T-Rex at the Jurassic World show, um, basically you stand... Pretty much like it's eating you. Yep. Okay, it's about to chomp oh. down. Oh, okay, great. Chomp down on you. Yeah, perfect photo op. Anyway, I was in there. It sounds strange, but I was I was working on the inside of its mouth, doing a bit of a dinosaur <laughs> dentistry, working yes. away on that. Anyway, someone come on and I turned around really quickly, and I nicked the top of my head on one of its teeth. Oh, you got and bitten by a dinosaur? I did. Well, I got. I had to go to hospital. I had to get four <gasps> stitches. Are you oh, really? But and of course, the doctor's like, "So what happened, mate?" And I'm like, well, I it's going to sound by a, a bit strange. <laughs> by a big leader. Don't see guys right, mate. What kind of tennis? Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's well, amazing, great, mate. Everyone yeah. will go along and see. No doubt it's, about it. And it's obviously happening during the school holidays. Kicks off Saturday, the 24th of September. Tickets from Ticketek. It's um, going to be massive. So get those as quickly as you can. Um, Perth Convention and Exhibition Centre. Jurassic World by Brickman. It's always a pleasure to have you in hey, here, Brickman. Can I, can I just say thank you so much for longtime supporters of mine. So I really appreciate all your time and effort. I love speaking with you. So thank oh, you. Well, you're right. a very Good generous you, guest. Whenever you yeah, come in, you've yes. always got great stories. You're a joy to be around. Oh, thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're proud of you. <laughs> Ready to make up for missed holidays with whatif.com? Well, you got to love an Aussie winter getaway, but bring on spring. Jump on the What If app to book hotels, holiday rentals, flights and more. What If? It's Aussie for travel. All right, so these days catching a flight is very iffy, right? <laughs> You've had the reports. So once you get to the airport and realise that you're boarding your plane and then once yes. you're sitting on your plane and you're going, oh, okay, all right. This is happening. We're on our way. Away we go. I mean, who knows if my bags will be there when I get there. But That's I, right. We are going we'll, into the sky. We'll deal with that when we get there. We're going to our destination. Well, Grace and her two pals have been home hopping on a jet from Dublin to Gatwick in the UK. When they heard a flight announcement, this is what happened. All of these slots uh, and the delayed departure, uh, some of my crew have run out of hours. This is illegal, maximum that they're allowed to work per day, and um, it's regulated by the aviation authorities. And as such, uh, we have no choice now. Um, but unfortunately, I have had to cancel the flight. Uh, we're going to be opening the doors shortly. No. So they're sitting on the plane, they're strapped in, they're ready to go, and that happens. So some happy of the so workers yes. have run out of hours, so yes. they mean they're not allowed to work, it's not safe for them to do yep. their shift, and yep. then they made everyone get off the plane and leave. And then they were, some people were booked hotels, mm. you know, while they're waiting for other flights, some people were booked on later flights. Um, but they do. They did say that um, uh, that woman that made the announcement, um, she looked really sad. <laughs> Oh, I mean, you don't want to be that one you that has don't. to break the news to people like that. Now, I know that's probably going, you do it. No, you do it. No, you do it. To the head um, flight attendant for the yes. shift, but there would have been a, a paper, rock, scissors situation, I know. wouldn't there? You make the, <laughs> Who's going to tell them it's not going to happen? Wouldn't you make the pilot do it? <laughs> oh, you'd make the pilot do it because he's behind a secure yes, door. exactly. They can't get him. No, that's right. But also, you'd be sitting, why did this have to happen on my ship? I shift? know. Oh. Why was I registered, Rod's... Yeah, rostered on rostered today. On this day. Yeah. We only really ever have to give people good news here when we speak to someone. You yeah, know, that's and like, true. You know, we give them a, like a big prize or something like mm. that. They're very excited. Um, giving people bad news, oh, mm. that would be horrendous if you had to do it for something important. That's what we want to talk about. 13, 24, 10. Bearers of bad news, um, mm. were you the person or is it your job? Do you have to yeah. do it regularly? Or have you, have you been the person that had to break something to someone and um, how did they react? <laughs> How did you feel? Because if they were a you customer, do I don't think they're going to be and, very well, happy. It, and it could just be at home. You might have had to break to the to the kids that they're not going to Disneyland this yep. year, like you know that kind of thing. Um, if a, like if if a family pet dies, the parents go okay. Um, rock paper scissors. Who's, who's telling? Who's, telling who's saying it went to the farm? Yeah, no, I haven't had that yet. But um, I would imagine. Would you make Megan do it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Podcast. And we're talking about being the bearer of bad news, like the poor old flight attendant on the flight between Dublin and the UK, who, even when everybody's on the plane, ready to go, had to say, yeah, this flight's cancelled, get off. 
She did a nice of a map. God, but you would have been just yeah, had oh. one eye out right out of the curtain, wouldn't you? Oh, oh you'd be you'd, terrified. You'd, you'd drop the little um, receiver thing and then bolt. You know what? I'd be out of there in a heartbeat. Because <laughs> ten years ago, people people could deal with bad news. Yes. These days, no. We're short tempered. We're animals. Amy's in Golden Bay. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. Hi, Hi Amy. Have you been the bearer of bad news? Yes, I had. Uh, it was my first year of teaching, and I had two Jakes in my class, and one was super intelligent and really bright and the other one was not at all yeah. bless his heart and um i had to give the academic achievement award at the end of the year and i <laughs> rang mum and i said look you know he's done so well and you know you should be so proud of him and he's getting this achievement. and she sort of like questioned me and she's like oh really and i was like why are you surprised like this kid is so intelligent she was so over the moon and she was like sound like she was gonna cry and i thought great anyway and then I hung up and I looked down at my sheet and I was like, oh, my God, I've rung the, the wrong, wrong one. I've <laughs> <laughs> got the wrong Sorry, Amy, you, That's you outstanding. You had, had to bring her back. her back. Oh, Amy. And tell her that, unfortunately, her Jake was not the academic achiever oh. that she... Um, and she was devastated. Oh, because oh, here she was thinking Amy. she's got a surprise she secret cried. genius. She cried. Yeah, she thought, she said, I thought he just, you know, made these changes. And, oh. had done so and you're well. like, oh, no. No, 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 sweetheart. No, 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 that no Your happened. Jake's probably breaking into someone's car. <laughs> Amy, how embarrassing. <laughs> Amy, that's mortifying. <laughs> so, was this an official school award or was one in the class? Yeah, it was, no, it was the one at the end of the year. Oh, okay, yeah, because if it was one. one in the class, you could just print it off an extra one and yeah. let it fly. But, no, oh this is God, the big one in front of everyone. Amy, how long did you sit on that before you made the phone call back? Did you do it straight <laughs> away? Did you have the, the guts rest to do it? Of, nah, the rest of the day, I just... I wanted to go home. I felt ill. I was like, then I tried to, co- I tried to coerce the deputy into doing it. And she was like, oh, well, you know yeah. what I like? Amy, is that you gave her that day. Yeah, that, of thinking her child was a Shared genius. in the afternoon. I mean, yeah, she, she probably, probably rang all her family. Oh, yes, yes. Isn't it? He probably oh, got Nana home. Got she's call. bought him an Xbox. He doesn't know why. <laughs> I love you. Oh, God, that's mortifying. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> Corey's in Wanneroo. Hello. Hello. Hey, Corey. Hey, Corey. Have you been the bearer of bad news too? Um, yeah, I had to let go um, 14 people one morning. Oh, 14, oh. Corey. Yeah. Um, and not all of them were on site, so some of them I had to ring um, while they were on R&R. Oh. And, um, Corey. I didn't really um, take note of the time, so I... Um, <laughs> Sort of woke some of them up from bed. <laughs> oh, Corey! And, um, yeah, and yeah, and then and then the company would make make the guys that were still on site work the time out. So you know, oh. be a bit, um, so you'd have to yeah, sort of see them for a week. And Corey, I think some I, I think some of them took it personally. Yeah, which is yes. which is which is fair enough. But um, yeah, it's, it's certainly the hardest part of the job. Especially the the, the the ones you woke up, it's like yes. oh my god, Corey, it's the double whammy. Up Corey, um, what was it? Yeah, so yeah. so after each one, did you have to collect yourself? Did you take ten minutes and do the next one? Or you just did them just, just in like a group, rip the band aid off, machine gun. <laughs> yeah, it just sort of had to be done straight away. Oh, because obviously, obviously, they'll just um, start messaging one another, going, oh, yes. you know, this is happening, da da da. So um, yeah, no, it's. You, at least your friends you know what? At least you didn't do it like one of those companies where they get a, um, have, an, have an all-staff Zoom meeting. Yeah, and say, like, you're all fired. <laughs> you're all fired. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. You have no job. Tough. You have uh, no job. We'll finish off with Renee from Vic Park. Morning, Renee. Morning. Morning, Hi, Renee. Renee. Have you been the bearer of bad news? What happened? Uh, yeah, so I work in after-school care and we obviously like give them afternoon tea after school. Oh, yeah. yep. And one day on Fridays, usually we have like a treat and we had jam roll cake oh, a couple of weeks ago, yes. and we didn't really count for the number of kids, and we ran out, <laughs> and a kid rocked up, and I had to look him dead in the eye and say that we had no jam roll cake left. <laughs> and he, he fell to his knees and just started sobbing. And I was like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, that's a lot to take on as an after-school worker. Oh, that's a lot. Jam oh, roll cake. Oh, oh, weird. Oh, the, the loss. <laughs> Look, I don't well, and betrayal. Oh, yeah. did you did you get yourself a little bit of jam roll cake? 
Oh, we won't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> Renee, you put some away for more than tea. There's none left, man. sweetheart. I know. None for you, wiping jam Sorry off your chin. <laughs> Nathan, Dad and Sean. Yeah, um, okay, there's a video doing the rounds on the Tiki Docs. Uh, <laughs> when a woman uh, posted a video asking the question, when you catch him cheating and he asks, what can I do to fix this? As in, I want to stay together, uh, so uh, I feel bad. Uh, How can I make this up to you? Yeah, yeah so right. this uh, chick, she um, jumped on and she said, um, uh, I told the guy I would continue to see him, but he would have to pay for my nose job that I really wanted <laughs> <laughs> because he caused me to have insecurities because he cheated on me. I see. Oh, yeah, that's, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, she goes, I also didn't want to waste my, uh, have, I want my time to be wasted because what if he cheats on me again? Mm. Um, she goes on to say that he, she got the nose job, yeah, and uh, he ended up uh, cheating on her again. So she, she got, got what she wanted. Yeah, she got she something got out of it. Yeah, so and she got rid like, of the dead weight. And I was just like, wait there, <laughs> is she all cheated on? Can you ask for some? Can you ask for compensation? Well, like if they say, how can I make Why this up not? to you? Then yeah, list your demands. So, I say, give so us twenty grand. <laughs> other people, other people dropped down. <laughs> well, you could, you could, couldn't well, you? Well, Sean, theoretically, other people commented and said, yeah, when um when when someone else's partner, when this girl's partner cheated on on her, she said that she made him drop six thousand dollars on lipo, um, and then then she took off once she had Great it. Great idea. Yeah. <laughs> so another one. This is what you're a bit excited about. She said, I did the same thing. I told him he owes me $2,000 for the collateral damage he caused me. So Just cat, got, cold hard cash. Like $2,000 cash. <laughs> Why not? To make it better. And uh, you know what? Because the promises are going to give you, I'll never do it again, I'll respect you, mm. um, I love you. I've just made a mistake. Me, blah, blah, blah. I know you're going to say that. I want something material. <laughs> I'm with you. Like, no, I mean, I, I have heard of a couple. It was a gay couple, and that that one of them was just dripping in diamonds. And he's like, "Oh yeah, every time he cheats on me, he has to buy me a diamond." <laughs> and I'm dripping. <laughs> just, she was legit dripping in diamonds. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess at the end of it, it went. Yeah, he's got all the yeah, diamonds. He's got all this yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and that. Yeah. And, and, but that and, day, that day, he's wearing, he's wearing a tiara. Yeah, yeah, like, oh my yeah, god, what did lost. he do to get that? <laughs> Bloody, Jeez. Bloody steam was that a football team? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody steam You're listening to Nathan, Nat and Sean. I didn't know that being compensated like with material things after being cheated on could be a thing to the point where I'd think if I was in a relationship and I want something. You'd be pushing them out the door. I think I'd be, yeah. I'd, you know, like, yeah. Honey like, trapping them. Yeah, honey trapping them <laughs> left, right and centre so I can get stuff. If this is true. Then, yeah. Take them back. Yeah. yeah. Cheating compensation, we're going to find out right now if it happens. Emma's in Maddington. Hi, Emma. Hi. Hi, Hi Emma. Right, Em. Okay, so you've been cheated on. We're sorry about that. Um, and they say, how can I make it up to you? What was the answer? I made him buy me a Collingwood quilt set and a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you new car. led with the quilt cover, <laughs> but and a car. Oh, bloody magpie! I mean, did you want it? You you sleep under a Collingwood quilt cover? No, I just made him buy it just for the hell of it. Okay, right. Okay, all right. Here's what, my list of demands. And what car did we get? A Ford Territory. Oh. 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 So, you see, I thought you would have, you know, like gone a little a hatchy, but no, yeah. you've gone for it. I didn't want to push my limit too much, so I thought, oh, I'll just go get that car. Do I mean, do oh, do 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 pushing it do. quite away. All right. So, um, uh, did he continue to cheat or did Are you still together? Still together? No, I left him as soon as I got the car. <laughs> well, because oh, you well had a done. car. Like we yes, said to Ellie, okay. you can, had a car. That's Get the right. conversation. Get out of you there. You off any time. You can drive. You should have asked for petrol money too. Thanks, Emma. Lisa's in Rockingham. Morning, Lisa. Good morning, guys. Okay. Hi, what was the compensation for being cheated on, Lisa? Well, so I'd actually been cheated on for eight years before I found out. Oh, oh no. 12, that's right. So that 12 months, I had one of those little designer dogs, one of those little cavoodles. Yeah. yeah. So I asked for a cavoodle, and we got a cavoodle. <laughs> to find out six months later, he got her off of the mistress he'd been cheating with. <gasps> he got the cavoodle So two puppies the from the same litter? From what gets it, she was obviously a breeder, and he had... Oh, got oh he got it her. from he got her. It from her. No. Yeah, and he actually takes my two young children to collect the dog. You know what? This is the thing about cheating men. You never know where their cavoodle's been. <laughs> See, that's true. <laughs> They need they're to putting, keep their cavoodle in their pants. They're putting their cavoodle on anything, <laughs> in anything, 
anywhere. I mean, any other breed, and he couldn't have done that, Lisa. Any other breed. <laughs> no, and I did not take the dog after I found out that. No, oh, yeah, right. Had mm. oh. to unload the cavoodles. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Stop saying cavoodle. And the cavoodle breeder as well. I know. Like, hey, they make some coin, let me tell you, because the cavoodles aren't cheap. Well, she loves you. She's in a sea of cavoodles, <laughs> Can't get enough. What are you going to do? It's amazing. She's right. looking. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. We're talking about, well, getting compensated in a material fashion after your partner cheats on it you. It sounds like it's good fun. I reckon. Rose. I mean, you know, not the, not the cheating part. We'll see. Rose, hello. Hi. Hi, Hi Rose. Hi, Rose. Okay. All right, cheating uh, compensation. What happened? Uh, so, not so much something I actually asked for, but I was rewarded for being... Uh, Cheated on by putting being put in my then boyfriend's top four friends on MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations! Well, that's a pretty high honour in the I top four, but it. not but not the the top spot, but just in the top I, four. No, 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 the fourth. You're the fourth. The fourth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I made it. I made it. You made it. Was Tom from MySpace there in one of the top four as well? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, well, oh, honestly, he wasn't friends with him, which was Rose. Kind of rude. Like, Rose. Oh, yes. Rose. I was so, very young, and I thought that that was good. But yeah, <laughs> oh, you thought like that was good? You were happy with that yeah, outcome? Yeah, I, I was. I was like fourteen, and I was so in love. And then I came to my senses, like I don't know, four or five years later. Yeah, because because then you would have yeah. gone, no, it, now I can see yeah. he respects me. Mm. Yeah, he loves yeah. me. I was I was 18 and I could buy my own alcohol then. So yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> sure. Okay, Rose. I don't think we want to delve into this relationship anymore. <laughs> Thanks, right, thank Rose. You. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. Lisa. Lisa, hello. Hi, how are you going? Hey, Lisa. Oh, there she is. Hey, Hi, good Lisa. Lisa. We're talking about um, a compensation for cheating. What happened? Um, so I found out my husband was cheating on with me with his best friend's wife and... Oh. My best friend at the time for four year period. Oh. Um, we tried to work it out because I went all 007 and put yeah. recording devices in the car. And <gasps> oh, oh, oh how Lisa, well done. Investigation. I love that. And yeah, and so obviously I thought we'd work it out because we have three young children at the time. Mm. Yep. Um, and my in laws, because I stayed with my husband and we worked it out, brought me a brand new Mazda CX-9. Yeah! Oh, Lisa, that's what I'm doing. I love that he got his mum and dad in on the actors to, to be the compensators. Oh, that's you know what? They're such beautiful people because I have no parents of my own. So oh, I'm yes. very, very close with them and they were just devastated when they found out oh. um, and they were ready to kick him out, not me. So. Yeah. You know, okay. seen. So, so um, you, did you get to pick um some, all the um all the extras and stuff like you know like um, uh, yes yes it did it was top of the range brand new leather yeah. seating sunroof did you get the sunroof and get the sunroof yes it has got the sunroof got, as yeah, well yeah you've got mm. the sunroof I've got the same one got the sunroof but you didn't get <laughs> you yours, didn't cheat so on, you no didn't one cheated get on yours. you Sean oh didn't they if, no. if, 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 you get yours from Melville Master yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is exciting. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Uh, the news was riddled with stories of all the weather damage oh. from yesterday. Pretty hectic, you know. I think Ooh. when we left, guys, um, yes. overnight it was pretty full on. But then... We were at work for most yeah. of it. So when that, that hailstorm ripped through, we were here. And so we didn't really live through too much of it. Luckily, I, I, I live in fear of hail. Yeah. Just from those crumpet cars, those years of... Is that from your house, That's, that's yeah. our front lawn. I'll show you now. I don't think yeah. any. It's a look, it, you know, and all those kids playing in it like yes. the snow Snowy, at, those, yeah. um, at, at um, their school. That looked like a bit of fun. But looks little, like the lawn has got dandruff, man. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? <laughs> it does, doesn't it? What do they use for dandruff? What's that stuff? Oh, um, head and blue. shoulders. <laughs> head and shoulders. <laughs> Selsen blue. Is that What's Selsen blue? That, it was back in the day, about oh, okay. 40 years ago, I think. blue? That's like a shampoo. Don't you remember that? No. Okay. I didn't suffer from dandruff back then. Me neither. Well, you sound like <laughs> you did. <laughs> and and um, also, also the inside of uh, our house, all the windows started leaking, or one of them oh. in particular, so that's going to... Luckily, you've got the wherewithal to be able to fix that. Yeah, yeah, I've got the skills. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more gaps. Is that doing? So what you do, yeah, you just roll no a towel? Um, oh, well, I didn't do anything. Of course, I oh, get well, the phone call from the wife, and yeah. she's doing all that stuff. She said if we ha- she hadn't been home, then, you know, can warp all your... Or, or your wood floors. Floors, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I'll get one of the neighbours onto that later today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you should have gone with the marble floor, Sean. 
in that wing. You know what wait, I mean? Like, wait, sorry, sorry, we talked you out of the Carrera marble. And Drill's going, no, Sean, no, lay down the thick marble. Well, you know, like the hair bone. You know, herring bone. Herring bone. bone. Mm-hmm. The hair bone. Hair bone. <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about something else? But, um, I'm so glad that I've never been one of those houses, I mean, been one of those places where you come home and there's, there's a, yes. a tree falling into your house. Oh. I mean, you know, that must be devastating, especially with tradies at the moment. Yeah, I know, it's hard to get anything fix anyone. fixed, yeah. You might as well just make a, wrap some fairy lights around it and make a feature. Like this place here, look at this place. Look at this giant tree that fell yeah. in this house. Oh. There's some hard bricks. It doesn't seem to have done too much damage. That is a massive tree. Yeah, it's yeah, a big tree. Yeah, that's some good brickwork. I am probably, like yesterday was very full on for me. I suffered storm damage and I was like, why haven't the news contacted me? But it's a new building, Nath. Yeah, well, it's not actually like... It's, it's, it's not structural. It's not structural. It's more full on than that. Okay. So my Foxtel, all the HD channels were wiped. <laughs> oh, pray for Nathan. And I was like, um, are you, wait, hang on. So are, are you okay? No, because I am used to looking at things in so, high definition. To be clear, the storm blew them away. I think I don't know the ins and outs, <laughs> Nat. The, 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 the uh, SES wouldn't come. <laughs> what? Come. You I called them, them though, right? Several times. <laughs> And they went, sorry, get, get out of that pensioner's matters. roof. Like, Are you joking? <laughs> Can, I can't I'm, get HD. I'm looking at normal television channels with like no definition. With low definition. I felt like I was watching early 90s TV, but yet with current shows. And I was like looking everywhere for them and I was panicked. And No one has ever do? suffered more. Oh, nothing, Sean. I I'm just waiting to see if they will come back. But if they don't. Have you turned it off and turned it back on yes, again? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I did. I, I mean, sometimes I in this job you hear of somebody who's going through a lot and that's clearly... I'm suspecting after saying this right now, we'll have the major news services around my place. We're starting a GoFundMe <laughs> for him to get him through. <laughs> it's going to be fine. Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Now, um, everybody has been waiting to see what Ash Barty is going to do next. Mm. Yes, mm. yes, Because yes. everyone wants her to go into another sport and she says no. Well, she, she's gone and played a couple of rounds of pretty big... Um, golfing tournaments, yeah, but just for fun. Of yeah. thing. I thought that's one hundred percent. No, she categorically going. said no. Do she not want to be a competitive sports person no again. No more professional sports. Mm. So stop bringing it up. Mm. Uh, well, we found out that she's got a bit of a new gig. Uh, here's her announcing it. Hey there, Australia! I'm so excited to announce that I'm joining Optus as their chief of inspiration. <laughs> That's, they made that up so they could have her on board. Yeah, 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 yeah. Chief of inspiration. Well, she's what does not that lying, mean? But that's not a title. I know. Or yes. a job. <laughs> so she says, um, inspiration for me has always been my North Star, helping inspire Aussies and encouraging them to be the best version of themselves, and I cannot wait to do that with Optus. No, she can't wait to pick up that paycheck. I mean, that's well done. If you can get that as a gig, it's awesome. And everyone is very happy with her. One of the comments. Well, we uh, love her. That's the why. article was good on her. I'd like a job like that. Yes, we no all would. No idea what it means, um, but it's a nice <laughs> title and the pay sounds good. And I think we all come across, um, especially these days, we come oh. across people, you ask what they do for a living, they give you their job job. Job title and you go, what? What does that even mean? What are you talking about? I reckon yearly in this place, in any place that I've oh, been in the this past, place. the names of people's positions oh, yeah. change in a heartbeat. You're like, yeah. Well, like, like, we have a department we, we, that's been through three different yeah. names. So remember, it's promotions used to be promotions, yes. which makes sense because yeah. that does promotions. Yes. Now it's integration still? No, no, what is it no now? it's audio engage, uh, audience oh, engagement. Audience engagement. Yeah. There you go. What does that mean, Nath? Oh, my God. Sean podcast. Ash Barty's got a brand new gig. Hey there, Australia. I'm so excited to announce that I'm joining Optus as their chief of inspiration. <laughs> Put that on a business card. <laughs> She'll be forever explaining what the hell that is. I don't know if it's still the case, but it used to be that the boss of um, SciTech, he was the director uh, the of director excitement. Of excitement. Yeah. <laughs> I like yeah. It. Uh, we are asking what your job title is um, and why it uh, requires further explanation. Hello, Shireen. Hi, how are you going? Great, Shireen. Shireen. So give us your job title, Shireen. Um, I'm a mobilisations admin. Immobilisations admin. All right. So I'm going to say she admin. works for immobilisation. Is it immobilisation or mobilisation? Mobilisation. Uh, okay, right. Mobilisation. Completely okay, You're opposite. getting everyone up together to get out in the workforce? Yeah, so you've it sounds got a like you. people and then you're getting them out Getting them on so site or something? You're, like, you're like, like a shepherd. You gather people you're and a, then move them places. You're like a border collie. <laughs> so, no. <laughs> what happens? Um, pretty much um, I um, ensure that all the workers have um, medical, drug and alcohol, um, 
to be able to go to the site, um, arrange training and making sure that they have everything that they need to be able to be mobilised. So you're literally doing everything to get them on the plane and out to site? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Mm. So dealing mm. with a lot of um, different things. Um, so it's quite a good job um, in general, but yeah. But you amazing. just have to explain so, it all yeah, the time. Yeah, so <laughs> the, the people that you're herding together to get all this sort of stuff, are, are they receptive to your job or do they see you as like a full-on nagger? Um, I am a nagger at times. I feel like a mum, but yes. um, a lot of the times the people are pretty, pretty on the ball and get things done quickly. Yeah. Yeah, because then they get paid faster. Yeah, I mean yeah, there are there exactly. are some that aren't happy with drug testing. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Amanda? It is what it is. <laughs> Thanks, Shireen. Sarah's in Byford. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Sarah. Sarah. What's your job title? Um, I was a hippie tutor. A hair. A hippie. Hippie. A hippie tutor. Yeah. I thought you said hair piece tutor. I, know, that, yeah, I, but, sure I mean, hippie tutor doesn't explain much either. Why you you teach people how to make dream catchers. What does that mean? Hippie tutor. <laughs> no, I used to, it's a home interactive program for parents and young staff. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's an acronym. So hippie is an acronym. Yeah. Oh. But also, now that you've explained that, what is it? <laughs> so we're used to being around children and teaching them about what they can do and can't do and things like that. So it was a lot of learning. Because, I mean, sorry, I'm a hippie tutor means that you're telling people how to correctly do a peace sign mm. and how to make a buck up on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, it's an acronym. Acronym. That's the right acronym. word. Yep, so, yep, yep. Yep. Okay, well, that's so you're it. encouraging them to... Are, are these homeschooling people or what are they? No, they were just kids in preschool. So it was about getting the parents to be their first teacher. To be engaged, yeah. Oh, oh, God, you must explain that's that all the time. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> And they're like, what the Jeez. Fuck? So we had an immobilize we had a mobilization coordinator. Sure. And now we've had a hippie tutor. <laughs> um, I think we'll do some more. Yeah, we've got, we've got actually, Julie no. from Cardinia. Morning, Jules. Hi, how are you? All right, Julie. Jules. What's your job title? Uh, principal consultant, service response, service planning and coordination directorate. How do you get that on a card? That doesn't mean that. anything. So, say, say the whole title again. Principal Consultant, Service Response, Service Planning and Coordination Director. Okay, so I'm guessing you do something in service because <laughs> <laughs> they've decided to say it ten and, times. And she's the principal consultant that does that. But if okay. you're a principal, you'd be an owner, wouldn't you, Julie? Is that part of it? No. No, oh, just, okay. so she's no, just the main so one. Maybe she's at school. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, so, Prince, so can you say it again? Say it again. Go. Consultant, yep. service, response, service response, service design and planning. Service design. Okay, so service I'm thinking and planning. that you work for like um like a kitchen place that designs kitchens or like a <laughs> tile centre. Uh, no, <laughs> maybe, not even close. Oh, maybe because you're watching the block. It's <laughs> for <laughs> consultant. Service. So service. Consultant. So ser- servicing, you service people. <laughs> it's not, fi- it's not in the financial people. sector, is it? Julie, no, because... No, no, not financial at all. Consultant. Consul- say, okay, give us a title again. <laughs> Principal? Principal consultant. Principal consultant. Service response. Service response. Service design. Service design, design and planning. Design. See, that's what took me to Beaumont Tiles yeah, or something. Yeah, sure, sure. Like, or like, like a kitchen place. So all right, put us out of our misery. Yeah. What do you do, Julie? What do you actually do? Um, I support public state with child protection matters. Oh, oh so this is a, oh god what that is what is the design part <laughs> i don't know <laughs> <laughs> so, no but it's service design so it would be like yeah, planning. No, planning. Sure that, that they get the service that they need yeah i mean come uh, on you, for it's child right. protection yeah which is very important yeah why make the bloody title so full on? This what? is my thing, right? This is the thing. With everybody that we've just spoken to, right, We they give us the title, we don't understand it, and then they tell us what the description yes. is. The description so is just shorter. say that. <laughs> then what they're telling us, so just make it that. <laughs> just make it that. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Now, if you caught, saw Fremantle coach Justin Longmuir's press conference yesterday, you would have seen him talk about the fact that there is no other injury concerns other than Rory Lobb in the Fremantle Dockers. The West mm. Australian reports that Griffin Logue, though, left the training track. Restricted doing... to light duties. Griff, where do we sit? How are you? 
All right, good guys. How are you? Yeah, great. Mm, mm, great. I hope mm. someone's lifting that phone up to your head because <laughs> you've been restricted to light duty. Yes, it, apparently you trained with the rehab group but couldn't couldn't manage the full session, so went and spoke to the physio. Confirm or deny? Oh, just once you become a key forward and ruck, you, you get wrapped in cotton wool, so you can do what you want, really. Mm. <laughs> are you going to look us wet, in the eye and tell us whether you're there. playing? Now it's a bit wet and rainy out there, so I just uh, put, <laughs> yeah. the feet up, put the feet up for the day. You've got to think about these things when you've got curly hair. <laughs> oh, hey, Griff, <laughs> I, I had the same thing in the rain the other day. I went to the kids, uh, one of the boys' um, footy training, and I was supposed to be out there helping. And as soon as it started running, I went and sat under a tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's, all you need. That's what you need, mate. Yeah. Yeah, but like, support. Doesn't it get like cold? I know that you're probably doing exercise, so you're warm. But doesn't it get cold out there, Griff? When it's nah, it gets cold. Yeah, me, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The, um, you get cold. Yeah. Oh, once you're moving around, it's fine. But I wouldn't know about that. Nah, nah, it's cold. <laughs> it's, yeah, not, it's not yeah, great, is it? Enough, well, she's, she's pretty windy as well, so yeah. you feel that nice cool breeze, and it's uh, yeah, it's game over. Tap out. So you're definitely playing, mate. Just to be clear. Uh, well, at this stage, yeah, most likely. What do you mean? No, are you looking us in the eye and telling us the truth? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. know. I'm not convinced. I, I wonder what eye we're looking in of his. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Nathan. He's non-committal there. I think it's there. brown and there's one of them. Yeah, yeah, it's very non-committal there. <laughs> it, it, it is interesting this, the, the way that Fremantle will go about it this weekend with... Um, Obviously, the big guy, Rory Lobb, unlikely to play. Yes. Griff, you were outstanding last week, so they need you to hold up the uh, the power forward end. Yeah, no, it was, the, um, it was definitely a good performance um, from the team, but I um, feel like I'm just finding my feet up forward as well. So, um, no, it's been fun. Jeez, it's, I said it before, but it's a, a bit more fun than playing full back, that's for sure. You seem to be hitting a bit of form just in time for contract negotiations, Griff. Good timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, always, always good timing around this this time of the year. But yeah, they just, is, they just uh, slip back into quiet quitting. Yes, <laughs> a bit bit nicer. But um, oh, I'm just really happy that we kind of get to keep playing from this time of the year onwards. So yeah. it's um, yeah, it's pretty cool to yeah have a first kind of finals campaign ahead of us. So um, individually, yeah, it's, it's exciting. And but obviously, yeah, as a whole, see where we can go. It's pretty fun. Hey, um, Griff, the uh, photo of you in the paper today, um, it's a good photo. You look strong. You look powerful. Mm. Looks like an Avenger that's not in his uniform yet. Yep. Um, is it one of your favourites? Have you had a look at it yet? People text it I to haven't, you? I haven't, I haven't had a look at it yet. Can it's you describe it to me? Yeah, okay. So your um, muscles are rippling um, as you <laughs> are facing the wind, but yet the wind is not powerful enough to stop you going to where you need to go. Um, yeah. The shorts are too long. Well. They're not too um, short, but they're just enough to encapsulate the power, which are the thighs that Griffin Logue has. Do you want more description or not? Your hair is curly. <laughs> it's getting creepy. Your hair is curly. <laughs> it's not, it's not you're, blowing you're too much in the wind, but yet it's um, nestled a little bit over your forehead, making you look approachable and charismatic. <laughs> yeah, wow. Well, That's a good look. That. Approachable mm. and charismatic is a very good look. Yeah, and his arms aren't just by his side. They're slightly out because, yeah. of course, his biceps are too big to and be able to do the tin soldier. Massive lats. <laughs> so he sort of has his arms sort of have to go out a bit, Griff. Well, thanks for, thanks for that description. I'll, uh, I'll keep it in mind when the, when, the, when the photo comes up. But, yep. yeah, wow, that's... Uh, I don't even need to see it anymore. After that. <laughs> no, very visual, Nathan. Is you might want to get it laminated, though, when you get home. The big game, though, this week against the GWS Giants because... I guess everybody's tipped you to win, expecting you to win, and there's a lot riding on top four. But until you get out there and get it done in Canberra, it's not a and walkover. There's a stat in the paper that says Fremantle has never won their last home and away game if it's been away. Yeah, yeah I saw that stat as well. So it's amazing, it's nice isn't it? Um, yeah, I, I couldn't believe it either. I mean, um, it's not too bad playing away. I mean, we seem to play away pretty well. So um, I've never I've never actually been to Canberra myself, but... I've heard it's pretty cold and over was a bit different, but um, no, we'll definitely be looking to yeah finish off the season strong and um, yeah, depending on ladder positions where that finishes us, another good um, opportunity for us. But yeah, as you said, it'd be nice just to uh, change history a bit on mm. that one. Canberra is one of the most boring places mm. on the planet. And you got to go to Fishwick, mate. you got to go cold. to Fishwick. <laughs> is that where the porn is? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> 
Yeah, it's right in the industrial Appar- area. <laughs> Apparently. Right in the industrial like, area. You don't it know. Easily. It's not far from training, actually, if you go to Marnica Oval there, Griff. Last time we played in Marnica Oval, I remember it was half time. We were playing North Melbourne and we were wondering, we lost a couple of players. We couldn't. We didn't know where they were. Mm. And Belly's looking, you know, my shoulder, you know, around the corner, where are these guys? It was Paul Medhurst and Trent Crow. They're both in the mirror. Just making sure the hair was done. Look good. I just want to go back. What's this area called that you get the adult entertainment? Fishwick. Fishwick. People don't buy physical adult entertainment anymore, do they? Do they? I haven't been out there for a while, Nath, but I remember this one building. It was called Adam and Steve's. (laughs) Oh, I don't think that stuff was for you. (laughs) (laughs) Had a good look around. I don't think you don't think you were the intended audience. Each to their own. Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.